Hello guys, myself Dr. Saurav. In previous two presentations, I have told about the SLE. I have started SLE with the etiology. Mm, there are very, there were various factors. I have told about the pathogenesis in brief. Then I have told about various antibodies means immunological basis behind SLE with uh, some terms of mixed connective tissue disorders and overlap syndrome. Okay, so now today I am coming to the clinical features of SLE. But before starting, I want to say that the most common clinical feature of SLE is the constitutional symptoms. Then comes the skin, then comes symptoms of joints like arthritis. So the most common symptoms of SLE are as a pre patient present as a constitutional symptoms. Okay, so let's start. Symptoms of SLE. Now in an outdoor when a female patient of reproductive age comes with symptoms of fever of unknown origin, fatigue, irregular menstrual cycle or weight loss. You have to note this very very important irregular menstrual cycle and weight loss and number four unexplained hair loss. With these signs, any refractive age female patient, if comes to OPD, you have to consider SLE. You have to consider SLE. And I have told in the previous slides that how will you screen it? Yes, through ANA antibody screening. And the method will be indirect immunofluorescence assay by or using HEP2 cell line. HEP2 cell line, not ELISA, because I have told ELISA was a qualitative test so not significant whereas indirect immunofluorescence assay using hep to cell line is a quantitative test and it is significant and what i have said about the titer yes the titer mu must be greater than equal 180 so these are the constitutional symptoms a patient can present in most cases in um, opd okay so let's proceed further now, in this system, I will mainly discuss about the cutaneous manifestations of SLE. So, there is a classification by Gilliam and Sontheimer and regarding cutaneous SLE. They said there are two types of lesions. Number one, LE specific lesions. Number two, LE non-specific lesions. LE means lupus erythematosus. So, in LE specific lesions, there are three types of LE specific lesions number 1 ACLE number 2 ACLE number 3 CCLE and what does it mean ACLE means acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus number 2 subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus number 3 yes chronic cutaneous LE among this which is the most common type yes acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus ACLE is the most common type so you have to remember the classification by Gilliam and Sontheimer of cutaneous SLE. There are two lesions, LE specific, LE non-specific. Among LE specific, there are three types of lesion, ACLE, uh, I mean acute, subacute and chronic. Okay, the most common is acute, cutaneous, lupus, erythematosus. Now, skin presentations. Yes, I have told it already. Acute, cutaneous, lupus, erythematosus, ACLE then SCLE subacute then chronic okay now i am coming to acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus ACLE in ACLE there are usually three patterns seen and what are they number one localized pattern localized pattern it is seen in most of the cases like 90 to 95 percent cases of SLE number two generalized ACLE it is seen in 5 to 10 percent of case and number three is very rare very very rare and you have already read it in during microbiology in staff and it is like toxic epidermal necrolysis like lesion and it is very rare so the most common is localized second is generalized ACLE and rare is 10 like lesion so acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus they have three patterns of lesion <coughs> 
so now first i will discuss about the localized lesion which is seen in how much of cases yes mostly 90 to 95 percent of acylic cases for now first look at the picture yes you can easily identify this is a malar rash yes also known as malar rash and this is the most common rash in acylic highly photosensitive tendency for scaling non scarring you have to remember these points it will come as a question and you have to remember these points non scarring tendency for scaling highly photosensitive most common rash in acylic and the most important point you have to remember that this lesion the malar rash does not involve nasolabial fold and the, by this finding the differential diagnosis you can easily exclude cloasma which involves nasolabial fold another differential diagnosis would be acne rosacea i will discuss it later when it will be required okay so these are the points about the locus localized acle okay so let's proceed further number 2 i have told that acl there there were three patterns i have discussed localized now coming to second pattern it is generalized acle and it is seen in how much yes 10 to 25% cases and the eruptions are morbiliform more over usually sun exposed areas and number 3 it usually spare the knuckles now you will understand very good when you when you will see the pictures yes you see the picture there it is it has almost involved most of the body surface and these are the hands and see that it has spared the knuckles okay so these are about generalized generalized acle not that much of importance okay now let's proceed further <coughs> sub acute cutaneous lupus i have told already acute cutaneous lupus there were three patterns localized generalized and toxic epidermal necrosis is like which is very rare and i am not discussing it here now i am going further from acute to sub acute cutaneous lupus okay yes see the picture and now see the points it is highly photosensitive non scarring bilateral symmetrical usually seen in forearm these are the points just i have told you you had, do not need to remember this but the next two or three points i am going to say is very very important and you have to consider it during the answer the mcq okay associated with anti ro anti la antibodies guys i have told you in earlier slides anti ro la antibodies associated with with what in during pregnancy and it was associated with neonatal lupus and congenital heart block and these antibodies anti ro anti la antibodies presence and its presence usually decreases the chances of nephritis and vasculitis and so i am here i am asking another question i have told you earlier that which antibody will indicate higher chances of nephritis and vasculitis in practical purpose we will find which antibody yes anti ds dna remember anti smith antibody was the most specific antibody i told you but during practical purpose or clinical purpose or uh, i have to consider the remission or relapsing of the patients uh, during treatment or after treatment i have to consider anti ds dna antibody because it was associated with higher chances of nephritis and vasculitis whereas anti ro and anti la antibodies are associated with decreased chances of nephritis and vasculitis remember it is associated with neonatal lupus and congenital heart block i have i am saying it over and over so that it will go to your brain and saturate it you can you should never forget it okay and it can be precipitated by a drug which type of drug yes hydrochlorothiazide yes you will be reading in pharmacology again but you, i have to mention it here now this is the subacute cutaneous lupus okay 
Now coming to last variety, chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus (CCLE). I have told you acute, I have told you subacute. Now chronic. Okay. See the rash. This is the very very important question. CCLE. Yes, this will be something different than malar rash. See, you can see there is some discoid shape. There is uh, which is called. Forget it. Yes, this is known as discoid rash. Most common disfiguring rash involving face, scalp, neck, and back. You do not need this biopsy findings, but I just I have written it here: keratotic scaling, follicular plugging, dermal atrophy. Yes, there are some areas of atrophy you can see in the image. Okay, now coming to the main point: five twenty rule. It can come as a one liner. It can be associated with the question. The five twenty rule is associated as associated with which skin disease? Yes, it is chronic cutaneous ailment. And what is the five twenty rule? Patient with discoid rash chance of SLE is five percent, but patient with SLE the chance of discoid rash is twenty percent. So this is the five twenty rule. Patient with discoid rash chance of SLE. Can be five percent. Patient with SLE chance of discoid rash is twenty percent. Pre malignant lesion. This is the pre malignant lesion, and it can lead to squamous cell carcinoma of skin. Remember, guys, I have told you the other lesion, malar rash, and the subacute cutaneous lupus. Those lesion cannot, or those lesion are not pre malignant, but This lesion in chronic cutaneous discoid rash. This lesion is a pre-malignant lesion, and it can lead to squamous cell carcinoma of skin. SLE usually do not cause non-scarring alopecia, but DLE can cause scarring alopecia. These are the most important points about CCLE. I am already underlining it, and just remember these points. See the dermatology portion, uh, be it medicine, be it only dermatology. You do not remember the whole points regarding image. Just try to identify and remember the image and the three or four points I am stressing on because it will come as a question. It 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 can come as an one liner also. There are another three variety of CCLE. I am showing it in this slide. Lupus profundus. Now see the picture. Just I remember the picture. It is also known as lupus paniculitis, and it affects the fat underlying the skin. Okay, just remember the picture. See the picture. So you can identify it later. Yes, this is hypertrophic verrucous lupus, and this is chilblain lupus. Yes, it will come as a question, and you have to identify. Nothing more points needed for this. So I have completed the skin manifestations of SLE in very short and to the point. I always try to keep the subject very very simple, so that you can remember it easily. Just go through it more more than two or three times, and you will be okay with it. You can start doing MCQ uh, right now. Okay, so uh, in this slide, I have discussed the dermatological manifestations of skin, and I have already first told that the most common symptoms of SLE are the constitutional symptoms. Remember once again, a female patient of reproductive age can come to you with symptoms like fever of unknown origin, weight loss, unexplained hair loss, fatigue, and you have to consider it as SLE. You you have to screen the patient with an antibody by indirect immunofluorescence assay using HEP2 cell line, and the titer must be more than equal 180. Okay. Next in next slide I will uh, go through other systems um, like joint arthritis and kidney, CVS system, lungs, CNS etc etc. All other symptoms affected in SLE. So thank you very much